This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Hey. Hey, you. You want to see something cool? Check this out. Impressive, right? Don't, e don't even answer that. I know you're impressed. The way you pull this off, it's very simple. All you have to do is bind your scroll wheel to walk forward by typing this into your console. It's pretty cool, right? I mean... I guess it is pretty much completely useless. It doesn't really achieve anything, right? But it's not completely useless. It's really useful for helping you get stuck in these doors on Swiftwater so that you can do some of the funny stuff I mentioned in this video here. I got someone. Because by now, I've made a couple of videos about TF2 tech, but all of the tech I've mentioned so far is a little bit too... It's a little bit too useful for my tastes, you know? So today, I thought I'd show off some of the least useful TF2 tech that I can possibly think of. From climbing upstairs really fast, to breaking your reloads on your weapons, and even taking mysterious fall damage without falling from any height at all. But first, why don't we go for a swim? Because I need to show you something. That didn't look like much, did it? But trust me, I just used some super mysterious tech right there. Seriously, look at how much height I gain with this tech compared to how much height I gain without it. It's subtle, but it's there. As far as I'm aware, there's not really a name for this tech other than just calling it water tech, which is a little bit uninspired, really. But to pull off the water tech, you actually need to hit three tick perfect inputs in a row. That's three inputs all within a 66th of a second of each other. Press jump on one tick, then crouch on the next tick, and then shoot a rocket on the final tick. Doing this is incredibly precise, but if you do it right, you will gain more height from your rocket jump than if you just didn't use the tech at all. And you might be thinking to yourself that that doesn't sound useless at all. You gain more height from your rockets, but oh no, trust me, it's useless. Because you can't just do this in any body of water. This tech only works when the water is at a pretty specific depth. The water needs to be deep enough for your character to be able to swim when they hold space, but shallow enough to where if they don't hold space, their feet touch the floor and their head sticks out of the water. And on actual vanilla TF2 maps, I cannot think of a single spot in the entire game where you can actually make good use out of the extra height you gain from this tech. There's some spots on maps where the tech does work, like this spot on pier, which has the right water depth in certain places. But where am I even gonna go with my extra bit of distance? If I'm gonna use the water at all, I would just stand in it and rocket jump. Since if you didn't know, rocket jumping whilst standing in water sends you further for sore spaghetti reasons that I won't get into just now. The only place where this water tech has found any use at all is in jump maps, where speedrunners will use it in certain places to go faster than the competition. For example, the second to last jump on Jump Gaylord. Yes, the map's called Jump Gaylord. No, it's not funny. Anyway, on this jump, the world record speedrun sinks three rockets in the water to do a water tech and fly to the end of the jump. And without the water tech, sinking three rockets like this just doesn't give you enough height. And the intended strategy for the jump is a lot slower and does some pre-fire shenanigans on this ramp. But outside of niche uses and jump maps, the water tech is well and truly useless. But if you want something that literally serves no purpose whatsoever under any circumstance, then take a look at this. This is Pootis, and Pootis is A-posing. You know, you've probably heard of this one, right? I don't have to explain this one to you. Most people know that this exists, but it's such a well-known thing that is so completely and utterly pointless that I thought I had to mention it in a video like this. You can do this as all of the nine classes, but I'm not gonna go over how to do it on every class. Instead, I'll just tell you how to do it as heavy. All you have to do is hold left click until you have zero ammo in your minigun, then keep holding left click and pick up a dropped minigun off the floor. You are now the funny Pootis. I know this is incredibly well known, but in a video about useless TF2 tech, it felt like I just had to mention it. But you know what's almost as good as the funny Pootis? Planes. 
This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. War Thunder is the most true to life vehicle combat game out there, with over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major world nations. Everything from armored cars from the 1920s all the way up to fighter jets and battle tanks from the modern day. It's so realistic, in fact, that War Thunder players keep leaking real life classified military documents about in game vehicles on the internet. Because that's dedication to the game right there, baby. That's how you know it's the real deal. My personal favorite part about the game is just how detailed everything is. Incredibly realistic graphics, incredibly realistic sound effects. They even have hyper-realistic damage models and hitboxes for the vehicles too. And you can customize your vehicles to no end. War Thunder is free to play on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And you can sign up using the link in the description to get a massive bonus pack that's available to new players and returning players. You get the exclusive Eagle of Valor Decorator, 100,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium for free when using the link. Thanks again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. If you were looking for something that you've literally never heard of, then take a look at this. This is weird, right? In fact, this one's so weird that I don't even know why it works. The only reason I can come up with is that there's a ghost in my computer, like, haunting my reload or something. If you have auto reload on and you fire your weapon, your weapon automatically reloads the moment it's able to. But if you hold right click, the auto reload will just pause. And this works on most weapons, even ones that actually do something when you press right click, like the sticky bomb launcher. Your reload will be frozen so long as you're holding the right mouse button. But with rocket launches in particular, it gets even weirder. If you wait for the reload animation to start and then press right click and then left click slightly afterwards, your weapon will do this, which is incredibly strange. Also, you know how your weapon like bobs up and down in front of you when you're stood idle? Like as if the soldier's breathing and the rocket launcher rocks back and forth? Well, if you press right click at any point, releasing right click will make the animation break slightly and go back to the beginning of its loop. It's really quite hard to spot, but it is there. And as far as I'm aware, this works on every weapon in the entire game. And I actually don't know why this happens. And to be honest, I'm not sure I want to find out. It feels like if I found out how this worked, the source engine gods would like put a curse on my entire bloodline or something. So I'm not even going to try and find out how this works. I'm just going to leave well enough alone and say that TF2 is haunted. But a big thanks to your boy Flash Money for actually pointing this bug out to me. There's a link to his video about it in the description. But for my next tech I want to demonstrate, I ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to break your legs? You know, it's a lot of effort to have to like run all the way up this cliff just to jump off it and break my legs. If only there was like an easier way. Well, it must be your lucky day because if you go into this spot in bad water blue spawn and you hold W and jump crouch into this corner just right, your character will briefly get stuck. And then after a little while, you will fly into the ground super fast and take a bunch of fall damage. This tech has many names, but if you're a fan of Portal 2 speed running, then you've probably heard of it being called a stuck launch. These two techs are exactly the same thing. And if you take a look at my velocity number in the top right of my screen, you might see what's happening here. I jump into this spot and I get stuck, but the game thinks I'm falling and it thinks I'm falling very fast. So the game gives me lots of downwards velocity despite the fact that I'm not moving. And by the time the game manages to get me unstuck, I had thousands of hammer units per second of velocity aiming directly at the floor. So now I can conveniently break my legs and die in the comfort of my own spawn room. Thanks, Valve. But now we're running out of completely useless things to talk about, so we're gonna have to settle for, you know, almost completely useless. Like this. This is a flare jump. Usually you need the detonator or the scorch shot to be able to explosive jump as pyro, but you can also do it with the flare gun. It's just really, really hard to do and it sends you such a small distance that it's almost completely pointless. Back in the olden days of Team Fortress 2, you used to be able to fire flares through thin walls by getting really close to the wall and aiming at a funny angle. Doing this would spawn the flare inside the wall when you fired it and it would continue traveling through 
through the wall onto the other side. When Valve patched this out, they inadvertently added a brand new bug into the game. Now, if you're too close to a wall like this and you fire a flare, the flare will spawn inside the wall and immediately explode. And that little explosion can only damage the player that fired the flare. But this now enables you to do little baby flare jumps. But the distance you get from the explosion is so small that there's only a handful of places in the entire game that you can actually use this to gain an advantage. And that's not even to mention that not every wall produces an explosion when fired at. It only works on brushes and displacements, which is hammer editor nerd talk for things like these. Anything that's a prop with some sort of 3D model, like a barrel or a car or something, won't work. And anything that has an invisible wall or clip brush won't work either, because the flare can pass through the tiny wall, but the player can't. It also won't work on walls that are diagonal to the grid either, because TF2's player collision is handled by a bounding box that never rotates. So if the corner of your bounding box is what's contacting the wall, then that puts you too far away from the wall to be able to fire the flare inside of it. So all of this results in a tech that is incredibly hard to do and can only be used in a small handful of spots in just a few vanilla maps. Now, there is actually another pyrotech I do want to show you. A while ago, I made this video talking about goofy taunt kill tech in TF2, and someone in my comments bestowed upon me some forbidden technology that I thought was just completely insane. The Scorch Shots taunt kill works in an incredibly simple way. All it does is copy all of the attributes of the last flare you fired and fires the exact same flare again when you next taunt. And TF2 has a lot of modifiers it's able to add to shots that get fired out of your weapons. Most notably is a crit modifier. So as it turns out, if you fire a crit scorch shot flare and then use the scorch shots taunt, the flare that the taunt fires will also be a crit. And this works regardless of how you got that crit, whether it was a random crit or crit boosted from the crits creek. But better yet, the taunt will continue to copy that crit flare forever so long as you never fire another flare with your primary fire ever again. It even persists after dying and after the round ends and the team switch. So long as you don't change class, change maps, change servers, or fire your weapon with left click, you will permanently have a scorch shot crit loaded into your ton. This sounds insane, right? Permanent guaranteed scorch shot crits to just spam down corridors forever. And it is relatively powerful in the right circumstances, but I am putting it in a video about useless TF2 tech. So believe it or not, it's not all it's cracked up to be. As much as guaranteed crits are good, it's only guaranteed if you stand still taunting for five seconds in order to fire it. And you can aim the taunt flare to go wherever you want it to, but you have to peek a corner and stand still while you do it. So you will just die if you try and spam this on 90% of the maps. That's <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> If you're on the defending team on a map that's incredibly choke point heavy, it does pack some serious punch, but it's really not as powerful as it sounds like it would be, especially on a server where random crits are just enabled anyway. Although to be honest, I think that might be a little too useful for this video. So I wanna just show one last thing that is incredibly hard to pull off effectively and has almost no practical use cases in the entirety of vanilla TF2. Meet the glide step. Performing a single glide step is very precise, but simple in concept. You jump up a ledge while crouched, then you release crouch and press jump on the exact same tick. You then crouch again and repeat this over and over to very quickly ascend a staircase that would usually take about five minutes to repeatedly crouch jump up. This is incredibly precise and hard to do and also incredibly useless. Not only is the timing really hard to get right, but it also also only works on very specific ledge heights. If the ledge is too tall, it doesn't give you enough time to uncrouch. And if the ledge isn't tall enough, then your uncrouch won't immediately put your feet on the ground so you can't instantly jump. But if the ledge is just the right height, you can plant your feet and instantly jump off again to save some time on your movement. This has pretty much no practical uses in a real game of TF2. But at least on the plus side, it looks really funny when you speed it up. That was my 
compilation of the most useless TF2 tech that I could possibly come up with, ranging from incredibly niche use cases to completely and utterly useless garbage that has no purpose whatsoever, other than perhaps maybe being funny. Oh, and also don't forget about planes. And don't forget about this video's sponsor, War Thunder. It's completely free, it's available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and if you use my link, you can get all that awesome free stuff I mentioned earlier. Go blow up some tanks for free in the comfort of your own home with War Thunder. But if you can think of any more useless TF2 tech in the comments, then please do let me know, because having niche garbage knowledge about games that I like is sort of a hobby of mine at this point, because without content updates, trying to break the game in stupid and pointless ways is all we really have left, isn't it? Thanks for watching.